again. Yeah. Yep. Yep. All right, guys. Welcome back to the channel. It's uh, Connery. 47 just cracked a whip. Uh, today we're going to be talking about fundamentals of striper fishing from the bank. If you're fishing from the bank, you gotta need to know how to properly cast. And it is very important. How important is it? Pretty important. Probably like 90% of the time you'll be casting as, uh, as far as you can when you're dam fishing like us here in Oklahoma. So. Yep, so you better learn how to cast. Today we're going to demo how to cast over 100 yards and the systems that we are using and how you can duplicate that okay and there's no joke we'll we'll do a drone confirmation and there's a dog <laughs> we have a visitor yeah that was not part that of was the not part of the plan <laughs> i'm going to show you what uh he's got going so this is uh you know my current setup i've been using this for a couple years this is a 10 foot 6 inch uh surf rod it's a uh, medium heavy ready for i think two to six ounce mm -hmm. uh reel is a four thousand size daiwa certate mm -hmm. hd uh line i'm using is um pop pro max quattro this is 20 pounds how important is the line uh to me the line is like if there's like four major uh components to your setup uh your line is definitely uh one of them one so of the major to me it's very important right. Um, yeah, and then uh, the, the lure that I'm casting. Or, the lure is very important. Too. Yeah, so the lure I'm casting today is a, just a, I'm a um, little stick, I think it was, 135. Mm -hmm. But this is a loaded Special plug. Edition, loaded. So we made a video on this. Uh, we'll put it in the description below. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that, this is what I cast at the dams. So this is just one of the examples of This is the difference between other, catching fish and watching people catch fish. Yeah, this so, is the... <laughs> this is just one of multiple plugs I throw, <laughs> but I'm using it to show you guys. Uh, right, and uh, to everything you see here, we'll we'll link to uh, where you can buy it in the video description. Yeah, so, I mean to get to get 100 yards, you don't need like the best gear. You just have to have a system that w will work for you. Mm -hmm. Like this system, I could cast it pretty decently far, but I don't think many people can cast it that far. You have to get used to it and learn how this rod throws. Mm -hmm. Because my setup is completely different. Yeah. Than his setup. So and then like hybrid setup is like completely different. From all but we all throw too. pretty good, <laughs> like pretty decently far. So. Right. So a lot of it depends on the weight of the lure, the actual rod flex. Yeah. So there's a little line, like um, things like that. Um, was it theory behind this? To me, I want a uh, pretty good rod with de uh, like a decent um, backbone, but I still want to be able to whip pretty good. So. The reason why I go with 20 pound line here in Oklahoma is because our fish are not that big and Max Quattro is actually really, really strong. I feel like it's rated for, even though this is rated for 20 pound, I feel like it's actually, yeah. the breaking point is if actually you, If you look that. up the specs, the Max Quattro 20 pound is the smallest 20 pound braid available. Yeah, and the reason why I want small is because the smaller the line, I feel like the further I can cast out and I've done multiple, um, I've gone through multiple different braids and to me this is the one that I have the most confidence in, in casting and in strength. Yep. That, that's why I, I use Max Quattro. Just don't let it touch rocks. Yeah, yeah, don't let it touch rocks. <laughs> um, so a lot of it's it expensive is, but yes. like I said it's one of the main components to my setup. Right, but like we always say if you can't even cast that far don't worry about breaking it off you know, yeah. because you got to get the bites before you can worry about yeah. line strength and fighting the fish and things like that so all right so 47 <laughs> is warming up it is cold today he's trying to teach you guys how to how to properly cast 100 yards yeah so okay so there's three things that i do uh, this is my stance usually my left leg's out and um, so when I'm ready to, when I'm whipping the rod, there's three things that goes on. Uh, I twist my torso, I turn my torso. And then um, another thing is, as I'm coming forward, both my arms are is either pushing or pulling. My left arm 
my weaker arm is on the butt of my surf rod. It's pulling the butt back towards me while my my right arm is pushing the rod forward. That, that's what's creating the acceleration of the whip. So, should I show them real quick? Just do one slow-mo without releasing it. Oh yeah. And then we'll go full speed. All right, so again, the length, uh, the leader on my lure to the top ring is set to where I like it, and this is my motion. So I will turn my hip, uh, and basically step forward into my with my left leg. That is okay. like the motion right there. I see it. I see it. So how important is your angle of release? Uh, angle release is pretty important. I mean, when you're whipping this, you're feeling the tension in your trigger finger, and that's yes. the finger right here. So usually I release right about here, and that's usually where the maximum uh, pressure is at or tension's at. So oh, okay. yeah. So always maximum pressure. Yep, when you're always. I mean that once you load up your rod, you can feel that tension. I mean, once you get maximum tension, right here is usually when I release it. All right. It creates that nice close to 45, I guess, DB arc. Okay. Okay. Ugh. All right. You listen close, guys. All right. If you do this right, you'll hear a sh clack. Yeah. Sound. There's a like a uh, distinct sound that every cast. Oh, uh, you'll hear. Yeah, and that's how you know you've done it right. You don't see that? That's real time, too. It took like two seconds for it to land. That's pretty far. That's all the way downfield. Yeah, that's like... Not too far from that tree line. He's really like a bunny rabbit. This is what happens at the dams. You cast forever, you get bit maybe in the first, maybe 15 yards of the cast. And then it's 95 yards back. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Drone is ready to go. Try to do this cast. Okay, ready? Red T. Okay. You confirm everything with the drone. It's somewhere over there. See what it dropped? It's there. Somewhere over there? I kind of oh. think I see it. Yeah, it's almost. I kind of think I see it. Let's fly this. Two feet. Yeah, drone problems. Oh, let's go. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Let's go over here. <laughs> we got the drone going finally. So we go on this side. Dude, I don't even know where it's at. I don't know where it's at either. So it's hundred. That's 300 feet right now. Yeah, so... I don't know where my lure is at though. Is it that? It looks kind of like... Oh. There it is. That's my lure. 350 feet. Ah, oh, crap. That's the lure right there. So yeah. 350 feet. Are you even recording this on your unit? Oh no. Yeah. Should have recorded. That's 350 feet. Confirmed. So, so I'll fly back to us. Just turn around and fly back to us. So that's, that's pretty legit. It's yeah. pretty legit. That's a long cast. Yep. That's a long cast, you guys. Yes, we are not using drones to go fishing, guys. Because we already lost one fishing, that's why. Okay? So don't ask how. That was a sad day. But that is the 100 yard cast for you guys who want to know who've never done it before hopefully you guys uh can make that cast as well like i said you don't have to use the exact equipment but if you do if you want to it's a proven system already uh links are down in the video description 
and it's gonna take him about 30 seconds to go back in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>